Please don't hold that against me. I'm one of those British people who actually like Europe. Um, and that's why I live in Berlin, in Germany. And it's a city that I absolutely love. It's a combination of ancient history, really horrible modern history. It's a place where <coughs> incredible things are built. It's a place where there's a bustling street life where you can get Michelin star food wherever you go, and where it's a place where you can be you're truly yourself. And there, I work for Springer Nature, which produces the most highly regarded scientific journals on the planet. Stuff like the scientific journal Nature, hundreds of thousands of textbooks from the Springer label, and open, open access success stories like Biomed Central. And all of this helps scientists to do really interesting and weird things. And I work there as a front-end dev, where I write code in our little skunkworks innovations department, which is all pretty cool. But I came here to tell you a story about how one night, late at night, I was trawling the internet, trying to find things to be angry about. Because that's what us SJW types do when we're not just tweeting about things and... Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I see some confused faces. I should really define what SJW is. So an SJW is a social justice warrior. It's what idiots say instead of so someone who cares about others. You know, like how people say political correctness instead of treating people with respect. And in modern Twitter troll speak, I guess you call me a feminazi or some kind of feminist killjoy, but the convention generally is SJW. Anyway, it was late at night and I found this post arguing about progressive enhancement. And, oh, I'm sorry, I've done it again. I should really define what progressive enhancement is. <laughs> so progressive enhancement is allowing your core content or feature to be used by everybody. It's the equivalent of, uh, the browser equivalent of political correctness gone mad. Sorry, the browser equivalent of respecting others. And there's two technical ways to define it. There's a classic way and there's the more modern way. And let's start with the latter, with the modern way, because I'm a feminazi fuck and I can do what I want to. So first of all, progressive enhancement is a technique for building a site that is robust in the face of the heterozygous web. Because the web isn't just this. It's this, and this, this, even this, sometimes this, and even this. In other words, you've got no idea what kind of device your users are going to be using your site on. And at the same time, Progressive enhancement is part of the broader concept of inclusive design, which is about allowing users to complete their core tasks no matter, well, no matter what. No matter their browser, no matter their device, phone or fridge, it's all the same to me. No matter their network connection, no matter their physical attributes. It's about designing and coding for all with a bit of empathy and a bit of love. Now the older, perhaps slightly more antiquated way of defining progressive enhancement is you hit JavaScript. I can bet which definition you've heard the most of, 
in Clue, it's this one. Anyway, back to that blog post. And I guess this isn't just one single blog post. This is much more of a composite of many different ones I've seen. So I'm not going to name any particular one. I don't want to be accused of calling anybody out or falling into any of those SJW stereotypes. Anyway, this post. It was chatting the normal shit about progressive enhancement. About how this is 2017 and everybody has some kind of evergreen browser. Everybody has a good device. And we should all be developing for the latest client-side frameworks. Because that way, we get to write more exciting code. And anyway, why should you care about these people who are using older things? Why can't they just upgrade? In short, progressive enhancement is horrendously outdated in this modern world. And this made me angry. And I was, why the hell are people saying things like this? So, after reading this post, I went back to work the next day and I wrote a really hasty blog post on my own during my lunch break. And I thought it would be read by no one, as is the case of, with most things that I write. I mean, it's all essentially howling into the void, isn't it, online? But it got picked up and people started talking about it. And they said things like, what is this trying to achieve? Violent language for justice over liberty. Excessive swearing. And no logical argument. Which, to be fair, is no different to what most of my teachers said at school about me. But it's okay, because other people seem to like it. Some big names. And they, might e they even seem to agree with what I was saying. So it made me clarify my thoughts. It made me realise that my anger on this subject was valid. It made me want to tell others more about progressive enhancement. So I came here to tell you more, to share this SJW Killjoy rant with you. And I've got a story in three parts. The three reasons why progressive enhancement is apparently only for SJWs. So I'm going to dive right into it with number one. My users are not like that. And this argument isn't just against progressive enhancement. This is used against everything that falls under the inclusive design umbrella. Because while progressive enhancement is an approach, a technical pattern for doing things, inclusive design is much more of a philosophy. One that says the web, and all technology, really, is for everybody. So when people argue against progressive enhancement, they're generally arguing against inclusive design as well, by proxy. And we as devs, we tend to get fixated on the very technical definitions about our users, about how they use our sites. We trot out Google Analytics, and we say things like, look, Look, 90% of our users are using this wonderful, amazing technology combo. Okay, yeah, there's those 10% others, but to be honest, they're just bad data. And therefore, we should just develop for the majority, really. And if we have to make sites that work for everybody, then that's like, oh, I don't know, selling car accessories to blind people. You know, it's pointless. And this kind of thing is an immediate what the fuck. And we should really delve into it because this is a good example. Because why wouldn't a blind person buy car accessories? Oh, they're blind, Charlie, and they don't drive. Well, okay, Sherlock Holmes, you fucking got me there. But they could be buying for somebody else, couldn't they? They could be buying for their girl racer daughter who loves a bit of bling on her ride. They could be buying for their partner's car. They could be buying something for the person who drives them around because they're rich and they have a chauffeur. Or were you assuming that blind people therefore means, you know, poor and in need of pity? 
They could be buying for their own car that they drive because they're temporarily blind, maybe because of injury or surgery. So what we need to do is really just stop assuming because when we assume, we exclude. And when we exclude, we cause misery to real people with real lives. Ah, but so what, you might say. They're just one person. We can afford to ignore them. Well, whoopie do that you can afford not to care. Or if you reduce it to economics, that you can afford to lose a sale. But is it worth it? Because you'd really better hope that these people don't have any kind of voice. I do hear that social media and online reviews are quite big nowadays. The best case for this kind of thing is that you have caused someone to despise you. That you've lost a sale and that you've caused misery. The best case. More likely, you're probably going to damage your reputation. In worst case scenario, you're going to get sued. Okay, so maybe you're not sold on the story of blind people wanting basic human rights and dignity and being able to use the web equally. I get that. Let's try another story. Let's assume that this is your personal kink. You love selling limousine rides to rich white dudes. You want to help them get from A to B and you want to help them do it in style. It's therefore easy for you to make the following assumption that if selling to limousine rides to rich white dudes, therefore they must all be able-bodied with the latest rich white dude gear. Which is immediate, you know, whoa, logic breakdown. Because why do you assume that? I mean, you're assuming that the user here is the rich white dude himself. But is it? Why assume that? What if he's delegating all of his shit to his poor overworked secretary? She's having to use the piece of crap computer that sits on her desk. It's some ancient underpowered piece of shit. It's got Internet Explorer in the single digits. And while your website is trying to do everything, for example, client side with some amazing framework, her machine really isn't capable of that. And the assumption that she has a good machine is causing her machine to smoke and billow. Kaboom. By the way, this is probably the point where some smug fuck is going to say to me, oh my God, why are you assuming the secretary was a woman, Charlie? You're so sexist. So you can perhaps imagine that I used Chris Hemsworth from Ghostbusters for the entire previous section, which is of course the SJW's favorite movie. But let's carry on with the rich white man himself. Now imagine he's out in the field. He's in some country he doesn't know and he needs help with getting a limousine ride and he's going to use your website. He's probably out in Africa doing something awful and colonial. But fuck, the perfect storm of shit happens. As he's about to fly home, his phone dies. Or he loses his phone. We don't know what, but it doesn't matter. Because clever, rich white dude, he can remember his login details. So he goes back to the hotel and he sits down in front of the hotel lobby computer that he's going to use. He's just got trolled by the computer and he's going to fucking love you right now. That's your website. And it's built upon the assumption that it's 2017 and everybody has the latest browser and the latest computer, even for your rich top end users. He's probably going to save his recommendation whether to use your product in the future for when he gets home. But it's probably not going to be positive. But okay, you might say, that kind of thing's ridiculous and it's not going to happen. Not in real life. And I'll say, really? You can predict the future? Because please, I've got some lottery numbers that I'd love you to tell me about if that's the case. Because you can't predict this kind of thing. 
And while I'm being ridiculous about the limousine guy scenario, perhaps, how about a real scenario? Take me. I'm your compatriot. I'm a fellow web developer. I use the latest technology. And just like you, I find out how awful the world is every morning through Twitter and Facebook. And I do it all on my lovely iPhone 6, which up until the 7 came out had like all the latest gear and all the latest technology, latest browser. And it's an amazing piece of technology. Or it was up until it got stolen in a pub in London just before I moved to Berlin. This is why I use right now. It's my old backup phone. It still works. It's still an amazing piece of technology. It's still literally a supercomputer that can access the sum total of human knowledge. But I can't use the latest version of Safari on it because I can't upgrade to iOS 10 because Apple won't let me. So good, good luck assuming that I can upgrade my browser there. And I don't upgrade it because, frankly, I've got better things that I want to be spending my money on. I don't want to be spending it on technology, to be honest. I know a developer who doesn't like technology. But I've got other things. I've got Berlin's amazing food and the rivers of beer that I want to drink. And the thing is, I can still buy stuff online. I still do buy stuff online. I still use services. So when you say, oh, well, you're not the type to upgrade then, therefore I shouldn't do the extra work to accommodate you, your assumptions have cost you a sale straight away. Because I am the type to buy stuff, to use services. I've just been cast down into the shit browser ranks. So maybe we should stop assuming what browsers people use and how they use them. Because I guarantee you, at some point, that's going to be wrong and your assumptions will cost you. But having been cast down, here I am talking to you. And I'd like to talk to you about technology. Because misconceptions about progressive enhancement and technology are one of the huge reasons why it's demonized. There's a lot of myths go up around it. So let's talk about a few. But first, perhaps we should refresh our memory about what progressive enhancement is. And that's the definition there. Emphasizes core content first, the core user journey, so that everybody can use your site. And then you add more layers as the browser or device allows. And what doesn't it mean? It doesn't mean letting the site fail completely just because the browser, device or user doesn't meet some arbitrary definition of what it should be. So if we're all good on that, I'll move on. And we've got an incredible skill to polarise these kind of arguments and it often gets reduced down to this kind of thing. We don't, <laughs> we don't hate JavaScript, honestly. Progressive enhancement types love JavaScript, just as much as we love our other children, HTML and CSS. We just hate people assuming that JavaScript is the only game in town. Because the web is about diversity, just like we saw earlier. And not just about people, but about code. There's a million languages out there. And just like in society, Diversity makes society stronger. So diversity of code and procedures makes the web stronger because it brings in different points of view and different ways of working. But when you have a reliance on JavaScript, when you're, well, you're not really coding for the web anymore. You're coding for some arbitrary JavaScript platform. And if the only thing you have is a hammer, everything looks like a nail. Well, if the only thing you have is JavaScript, then everything tends to look like a JavaScript application. I guess you just need to know when to use JavaScript. Don't use JavaScript to replicate functionality that already exists on the web. You know, things like checkboxes and scrolling. 
there's no need for that kind of thing because we've gone that the browser is already powerful no don't load react just to do a single state change on a page nobody's going to be happy with you for that least of all the user you're just making performance terrible for very little gain and very similarly people say well you mean we can't use JavaScript at all? And I can understand how that kind of myth starts. Because, yeah, progressive enhancement people say, yes, you should be able to use, you know, um, you should be able to complete your core journey without JavaScript. But we also say the same thing about CSS. Nobody comes out saying, oh, you hate CSS then. No, so I'm just saying just chill a bit, you know, when, when people think we're attacking JavaScript. Because if you think that, then perhaps you're misunderstanding the basics behind progressive enhancement as a technology pattern. So yeah, we do say start out with basic HTML and then use JavaScript to hook onto that HTML and upgrade it where appropriate. So for example, this form here by default sends data to a to a via form action to a server somewhere that works 100% for everybody you've got full user coverage but then you can upgrade it when javascript is available and the device is appropriate you can sub hook onto the submit event serialize the data send it to an api endpoint and boom you've got your data and stuff like Drupal, they've, well, I'm assuming everyone here uses, makes this really easy. I used to be a Drupal developer back in, back in ancient times, back in Drupal 6 or 7, and I remember that kind of stuff was there now. I mean, you all must be on, like, Drupal 25 now or something like that. <laughs> Progressive Enhancement loves JavaScript. Because JavaScript allows some really exciting Progressive Enhancement features, the kind of stuff that people are calling Progressive Web Apps, Sites that work offline, which I really, really wish I'd had when I was coming here on the train from the airport and all my carefully saved tabs were empty because I didn't have data. No, using stuff like service workers, sites that can be installed, push notifications to the OS. These are all additional things and there's so many exciting opportunities here. And let's make it clear. Progressive enhancement isn't just about JavaScript. It's about progressively upgrading everything. So it's about serving basic CSS, but using feature queries to detect advanced CSS, stuff like with new grid layout. It's about serving small basic images, but then using source set to send more appropriate images down the wire when you get a chance. It's about adding machine data and allowing your page to be read by everything and everyone out there. These are all progressive enhancement features. And the loss of any of them does not prevent your page from just working or the user from completing their core task. But still, people do still come up in, to me in the streets and they say, well, my app, my app is too complex for progressive enhancement. You might be right there, because sometimes there's some things that just cannot be progressively enhanced. Like this recreation of that old 90s classic Command and Conquer. If you asked me to do this, I would not be doing this with progressive enhancement. I'm not a masochist. Or this 3D interactive game. If you asked me to build it, I'd be using JavaScript manipulation of the canvas element. Actually, if you did ask me to build this, I'd be running out of the room because I, that's so far above my skill level, it's unreal. But these things are games. They're things that just can't be built with progressive enhancement. And more importantly, they're not essential goods or services. Nobody's gained disadvantage from not being able to use it. No one gets disadvantage from not being able to play Flappy Fucking Bird. So yeah. Do what you want there. And okay, okay, I get it. Some things are just too complex, you know, and they have to have client-side manipulation. They can't be built with progressive enhancement. But guess what? 
That kind of thing, despite perceptions, is an incredible minority of sites on the web. Look at this list of the top 10 sites in the UK. All of them, on the client side, quite simple. Nothing that can be built with via progressive enhancement. And I am looking at you, Facebook, that could be done with progressive enhancement. You don't need React for everything. 90% of the time on the web is spent looking at content sites. We sit on our sofas and we scroll and we scroll and we scroll. And as much as the social media giants would like you to believe that you know, you're interacting, most of the time we're not, we're consuming. And the majority of us here probably build these kind of sites. Or at most single page apps that you know, essentially send an email address to a server somewhere. And there's no shame in that. We don't have to write everything unnecessarily complex. I could do a whole talk about the front end community feeling inferiority in regard to other fields, but that's a whole nother rant and talk. The site you're building, it can probably be built with progressive enhancement. But if you are one of the devs, you know, who's out there building something like Google Docs, then fair play, you know, my infinite, um, my infinite respect. But we should stop worrying, to be honest. But this is another myth. So you want everything to work on the same, on every browser, no matter what? If this was true, to be honest, I would have quit computers years ago, because fuck supporting Internet 7, Internet Explorer 7, right? It's about delivering the core experience to your users again. Why give all this amazing JavaScript and CSS to browsers that can't deal with it? You should deliver the core experience, yes, using HTML and perhaps some minimal CSS. But then use something like cutting the mustard. It's a well-established pattern out there. Detect if a browser can support certain things. And then when it can, just upgrade the experience. Add your advanced CSS. Add JavaScript. This kind of thing has been standard practice in human-centered organizations for years now. It could do with being out there more. But why go to all this bother, you might say. Everybody has a good browser. And besides, nobody disables JavaScript. And it's true, people don't really disable JavaScript. But that's not the scenario progressive enhancement is aiming to cover. Because it's about building a robust web application that works in any scenario. It's not about disabling JavaScript. It's about JavaScript failing. Because everything transported over HTTP is transient and flaky. There's no guarantee that the data will reach its destination, i.e. the browser. And look at this government digital services um, survey. They're from the UK. Um, at least 1.1% of all visits won't support JavaScript. And that's a base figure. The likelihood is probably much higher than that. It was simply the technology they used to measure it couldn't measure any further than that number. And why? Why would it fail? Well, why wouldn't these people get JavaScript? Well, because of flaky connections, blocking elements, render errors, ad blockers, ads injecting weird breaking scripts into the page. There's lots of things. But it's definitely unwise to assume that the only reason people won't get JavaScript is because they deliberately turned it off. Ah, but it's only you old timers who care about this kind of thing. And that's possibly true. We're certainly the most vocal about it. But generally, the old timers are the ones with life experience. And we're the ones who know that life and people can fall on hard times. That people have failed by technology, by money, by their own bodies. And maybe you'll protest and say, but old timer, I don't have enough time to do this kind of thing. Well, as old timers know that you do have time to do this kind of thing. 
especially if you're baking it in from the start. But maybe we old timers, we just have different priorities. And if you say you don't have time, but you've ever said one of these kind of things, and you prioritize that over making things better for your users, then making it better for low-end circumstances and low-end devices, then ask yourself, are you coding for the users at that point? Or are you playing with cool new things? Because if it's the latter, then some refer to that as technology masturbation. But we've started to develop for ourselves, I think. That's the real problem. And we're not developing for the general population. We've begun to consider everyone and everything as uniform. To consider the web as a single giant platform. A stable platform that just works. And this so isn't the case. The web is diverse and weird and wild. That's its very strength. That's what makes it amazing. And this choosing not to engage with progressive enhancement and inclusive design might make our lives easier. But what cost? Do our fancy build chains and frameworks make life better for the users? Or are they a developer convenience? They may, might make our lives somewhat easier and save us some time. But we've cho chosen to prioritise these tools over our users. And we need to start focusing on, in, on the users again. And yeah, there's loads of things we need to fix, a lot of work to be good and done. It's still harder to enact progressive enhancement than not to enact it right now. Don't get me wrong. And these established tooling chains that we have for other areas of the web just aren't there at the moment. We can't just mag magic up a solution yet. And yet we still need to do these things. We need to make it easier for our fellow developers to do progressive enhancement. Because at the moment it takes effort and work. There's no NPM install progressive enhancement. And in the same way as if you wanted a good looking site, you don't slap bootstrap on there. It's the same with progressive enhancement. If you want a site that's usable by all, you have to work at it. Because progressive enhancement is the biggest technological challenge you'll ever come across. Not because of the complexity of code or the algorithms needed, but because it requires thinking broadly and about everybody. Which brings us quickly to reason three. Morality. The biggie, the elephant in the room. People say there's no reason to develop progressive enhancement because morality doesn't and shouldn't influence tech decisions. You know, like how tech is rational, tech is pure, it's not sullied by silly emotions and feelings. And this takes me back to a quote from the start, from that blog, from that composite blog post about 100 slides ago that I was talking about. And this quote is really real. Progressive enhancement is just a moral argument. Just. One of the most hideous words in the English language. Mm -hmm. Every office should have a jar that people put money into when they say the word just. But yeah, maybe this young white dead boy fresh out of university, because let's face it, who else was going to write that, really does have a point. A lot of things are just moral arguments. For example, saying that you should stop and help somebody in the street. That is just a moral argument. Saying that it's wrong to throw your neighbour's cat in a bin is just a moral argument. Saying that we should care for the sick and the needy, that is just a moral argument. And I get that. Obviously, people should be left to die just because they can't afford medical treatment. To say otherwise is to fall into lazy, morality-based arguments. But what would good, gentle Tim Berners-Lee say about this? The man who invented the medium that we all make a living from every day. I found a quote from him, and he said, the web is universal. 
the web is for everybody. And that's so at odds with what these blog posts and this recent attitude has come to say. We've started to say, well, let's just design for people like us. Let's forget about those awkward cases. And this reveals a larger problem in tech, the lack of empathy, the lack of diversity. We can't imagine that others might have different experiences from us, that they aren't just using the latest iPhone and the latest MacBook, and that they're not always in the best position. We have to get better at this. We have to start building empathy into the way that we work. And you might say, oh, this stuff is hard. Well, get over it. Life is hard. Being an adult is hard, but we still have to do it. We still have to be kind and we still have to stand firm and do the right things no matter what. This talk asked the question originally, why are those feminist SJW killjoys always going on about progressive enhancement? And that isn't the real question. The real question is why are those SJW killjoys always making this into a moral argument. You know why? Because the moral argument is the fucking argument. There are a million reasons why you should do this technologically. But none of those are better than just being a kind and good person. Thank you.